Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm John. Today we have the big one. The big one as in the big power adder. So what we're going to do today is we're going to install the DH motoring, the DHM uh, standard size bore high compression piston. So there's a very brief write up uh, that comes with the piston, um, the 91 octane fuel, 93 is even better. We went into that on the what's on the bench episode. Um, there's an aluminum spacer that comes with the kit that the spark plug goes into. The, um, the real key here is requires setting ring end gaps during installation. So that can be a little bit tricky if this is something you've never done before. So if you don't have these ring gaps set properly, the rings expand with the heat of the motor. So your piston expands and your rings will expand too because the rings are what's sliding on the cylinder surface. That's gonna be the probably the hottest part inside the cylinder there. So that's gonna expand quite a bit. So these gaps ensure that the expansion is accounted for and um, if you don't have it right those end gaps are going to come together and the ring is going to expand the only way it knows where to expand then you end up with uh, engine failure because your piston is seized because those rings got too close together so when you buy this kit I definitely recommend getting a um, oops so I would definitely recommend getting uh, engine um, piston ring filer so it's like a little tool luckily we had this at our race car shop because we built a couple of uh, race car motors there so I don't know if it's gonna work for this small of a setup but we're gonna try it anyways worst case scenario you use a really nice file and you kinda file a little bit measure file measure it's a long process um, and uh, it's tedious so it's not impossible though if you're uncomfortable with all this, definitely bring it to a professional. Bring it to a motorcycle shop. So the other thing you're going to need are a set of feeler gauges. You can find these cheap on Amazon. That's where I got these. Basically all it is is a thin strip of metal. That's the thickness that you're going to be um, testing for. Of course, you're going to also find the Honda factory manual. Very helpful for you. This video will probably eliminate your need for the manual because I'll be using the manual and the process I use is what the manual says. Hey everyone, this is John from the future. I'm dropping in here. The project is done and I just wanted to insert a couple of notes before you begin on the process. Uh, the first thing is not everything needs to be taken off to do this. So a minute ago I said that I was going to follow along the, uh, the with the factory manual process. It's not entirely necessary and um, being that I didn't have a couple of those pieces on the bike, namely the air intake, uh, I kind of just went with my own method. And it was actually pretty easy. Uh, we didn't need to take off the throttle body or the intake or anything. So basically I just did it how I thought was best and referenced the manual just to make sure I was doing everything in the order it should be done. So with that, uh, I'm going to put the torque values as little call outs during the video. Um, that should tell you what the torque needs to be for that specific bolt. Some of the bolts I didn't actually torque because it was like seven foot pounds of torque. It was really, really light. My torque wrench doesn't even really respond to seven foot pounds of torque, so it's not worth it. Um, so the other thing that you're, you're going to see is um, that I did not drain the oil. So the oil does not need to be drained to do this project. Uh, the reason why I didn't drain the oil is because when a piston is breaking in and the rings are breaking in, there's going to be a lot of metal shavings involved in that process. The rings are going to seat in. So with that, 
there's going to be an increased amount of metal shavings in the oil. And I got criticized for not cleaning out the oil catcher screen when I did the oil change video. And the reason was because I knew I'd be doing this project and I want to do it after this project because I know it's going to be filled up with uh, oil shavings, both from the first 600 miles of riding and then now with the new pistons and rings. So just wanted to drop in and insert those little things there. And uh, hopefully my process is a little bit easier than the factory manual. Enjoy. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the process of installing the piston rings uh, into the piston, which is gonna require us to uh, find the end gaps and probably adjust them. Okay, so the oil rings, the oil scraper, uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna be this corrugated looking one, and then the two 
thin ones that are identical to each other. These are going to install on the piston top, top, middle, and uh, bottom on the bottom groove. All right, so the rings are not labeled uh, like a stock ring would be, where it has the uh, R on the top ring and an RS on the second ring. So uh, that makes it a little tricky. Basically what we're going to do is um, go with the black ring on the bottom. And the reason I'm doing that is because I feel kind of a rounded edge on this top ring. And the bottom ring has a sharp edge on it. Basically that's how the rings are designed. The top ring has got a bevel in it on the stock ring. And the, uh, the middle ring doesn't really have a bevel on it. So we're just going to take that as our best guess. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this ring and I'm going to put it on the top here. This is the, the top of the, the stroke which the piston goes through. And we want it up here because I believe these cylinders are tapered. So we want to get it past that carbon line. I'm going to take this piston and go underneath and slide it up just to make sure I have this ring up here seated properly and have it level up on the top. So we're going to push it up, not too high, but a little bit just to make sure that it's sitting in the cylinder as it would if it's on the actual piston. And then we're going to measure the gap. I'm looking at the top ring between 0 0.007 and 0 0.009. So I'm going to start with 0 0.007 right here. I'm going to see what we got. And it is too tight. So we're going to have to file this down a little bit. Okay, so this is a pretty neat little tool here. So basically we're going to grind the piston ring by turning this. And it's got a sanding disc here. And we're going to push the gap up here and these two dowels are going to squeeze it tight and it sounds terrible but this is going to ensure that we get an even gap and I have absolutely no idea how far I should go with it so this is going to be just a grind to measure grind to measure until we get our desired gap okay so it didn't take but two tries and I got the gap that I was looking for, which is right in the middle of the range at 0 0.008. The range is 0 0.007 to 0 0.009. I live in Florida, bikes get hot. So I'm gonna show you, I have a 0 0.008, 0 0.009 queued up here. And I'm not sure if you can see the gap, it's right up here. I'm gonna go ahead and Slide this in. So the feeler gauge goes in good on the 0 0.008. We try the 0 0.009 and it should be too thick, which it is, so it doesn't go in. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm uh, right on the little bit of a tight side of 0 0.008 and that's where I'm gonna stick with this top ring. So we're gonna move to the second ring now. And the second ring, the bottom ring is between a 0 0.009 and a 0 0.011. Let's so get our 0 0.009. I'm anticipating not getting that mark. Nope, just a bit too tight for it. So I'm gonna have to open it up on the grinder again. I'm going to try our 009, which is the smallest measurement, smallest gap that you're going to want. Still didn't hit it, so I'm going to go ahead and grind at this until I get the measurement I want. Okay, so I think I ground away at the uh, bottom ring a little bit too much. You can probably see that gap in there. It's a pretty big gap, so um, that might not be so good for, uh, for the outcome of this. It, it might blow by a little bit of uh, oil. It might blow a little bit of smoke out of the um, exhaust. So we're going to go with it and we're going to see what happens though. The worst case scenario is we replace the bottom ring. 
which is a pain, but not that hard on a little bike like this. So bottom ring gap, too big, but we're gonna go with it and see what happens. Okay, so next important thing is the piston ring gap orientation on the piston itself. These piston rings, the gaps need to be 120 degrees apart from each other, so you have to stagger them. So 120 degrees apart is like that, like that, like that. So one gap here, one gap here, and one gap here. To make this easy on myself, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little dot where this 120 degrees apart is just to make it easy for me to remember and to make sure that I have them right. So with that going into the cylinder you're gonna to have to make sure that these gaps stay where they should be 120 degrees apart. That ensures that compression doesn't just go straight through past the two open gaps like that. You need to have them staggered so that compression doesn't find its way easily past the ring gaps. So the next step here is to put the circlip back on one side of the piston and then we're gonna prepare it for installation. Okay, so it's important to orient the piston. You can see that that says in. So that's the intake. That means this side goes to the top. It's always good to use a little bit of oil too. I forgot to mention that. So lightly oil up your uh, wrist pin here. So that way everything is lubed up. We'll lube up the piston here in a minute before we uh, actually installed into the cylinder. So there that goes. And then the next step, I'm gonna put a rag under here just to hold it up off the studs. And then we're gonna get the circlip on this side. And like I said before, it's good to have these things lubed up so I'm going to take a fair bit of uh, just Honda motor oil here and kind of lube this whole piston up except for the top the top the the dome up here doesn't need to be lubed up because it's the combustion part so all that oil is just gonna hit the spark plug and um, that's just gonna make it smoky for the first couple of minutes so uh, avoid getting it on the dome and I got some on there so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off it's not a big deal but I don't want to have smoke at the beginning of the startup if if I don't need it so now we're gonna go ahead and orient the rings to the, uh, the marks that I put them on
Okay everybody, the job is done. So the process was not difficult. The factory manual is very handy to have, especially when it comes to the torque values. I called out the torque values in the video, so hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully you don't need to go buy a factory manual for this, based on my methods. However, it's always a good thing to have, so I'll probably even link that in the description. Uh, a lot of people ask me for that, so uh, just I'll just put it down there for y'all. Uh, otherwise, um, there's a couple of things, a couple of hitches I ran into. One was not knowing really what ring was top and which one was the bottom ones. They're, um, they're not marked like the uh, OEM rings. So uh, basically it was just using some common sense. The darker ring goes on the bottom. Um, and I'm pretty sure of that. So we'll, we'll find out. Uh, basically the other thing was uh, was a big oopsie, was uh, filing that bottom ring too big. The gap was too big on it after I was done filing it. I don't know how that happened. Maybe I just didn't have the ring measured right the first time, and then when I took the second cut, it overcut it. So um, I'm mi uh, minorly concerned about that. The only thing that's going to do is cause a loss of compression and maybe some blow-by from oil getting up to the uh, spark plug to the combustion chamber area, sneaking through that bigger gap. But uh, I don't know, I'm gonna run with it. I started up the bike and um, didn't see a bunch of oil or anything, so we'll see what happens with that. Worst case scenario, I do it all over again, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. We're gonna go with it, see how it works out. Another thing is don't forget that when you do this piston install you have to have a reflashed ECU so I was running the original ECU in the bike with the stock pipe the man in the box M take TB cam uh, I was building up to this swap I knew I had it this swap was in the, in the works for a long time so I was just kind of getting the bike um, where I needed it to go until I was ready to do this and then you also noticed that I put the Yoshimura race uh, exhaust system back on. That's important as well. So with this piston, you got to have some supporting effort. Got to have your intake, got to have your exhaust, you got to have your ECU reflashed. So um, you, you got to run the 91 octane or higher. So 90, I'm going to run 93 ethanol E10. I was told by DH Motoring that that was the best. And there's some criteria that goes with this. So it's a little bit more high maintenance of a bike now, but that's okay. Cause this is my fun bike. This is the project bike. Uh, this is the path I chose for it. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more speed out of it. A little bit, a little bit faster on the, uh, on the straights. And uh, I'm anticipating a little bit more torque. So hopefully picking up the um, loss of low end power and torque that I might have sacrificed when I installed the TB cam. Hopefully that's picked up by a little bit higher compression so it balances out to where it's a stock feel with just stock power level being here. Now over here, same sort of graph or dyno power curve with what I'm saying. I don't know, it's laid out. So 
I might be confusing. And there's a lot of exhaust fumes because I just started the bikes. <laughs> I might not really be in the best state of mind right now. Also, don't forget to do your ECM reflash or the initialization, ECU initialization process. I did not cover that step by step in this video because I've done another video for that already. I'll put a link up there or down there in the comment area or in the description area. So check that out, make sure you do that. And I also reset my throttle position sensor because I installed the reflashed ECU. So normally you don't need to do the throttle position sensor unless you've taken it off. But since I put a new ECU in there, it needs to be reset. So the new ECU starts from a blank slate. And um, the ECM initialization needs to be done anytime you take the cylinder head off, you change a piston, uh, you change an injector, change a throttle body. Basically anytime you change anything that's going to alter the feedback to the ECU, do an ECM initialization. So we did that um, and uh, everything was okay. Startup was good, so now I'm anticipating going and riding for 15 to 20 miles to get this ECU learned uh, to what this new power output is and to what type of fuel levels or fuel input it needs to have now. So it should be needing more fuel, obviously. So with that, I'm going to ride up to the gas station. I'm going to put some 93 ethanol E10 in it, and we're going to see how it does. And we'll probably circle back around and uh, obviously going to do a review on this to uh, see what the new speed potentials are on the bike. So we'll do that in the moto vlog in the future. And that's it. So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for all your support. Thanks for your subscriptions, all the comments. Uh, a lot of you guys are enjoying what I'm doing with the channel. And I appreciate that. And there's a pretty big surprise coming hopefully in November that you all might be interested in. So I'm not going to expand on that now. I'm going to tease that a little bit. But stay tuned. Thanks again. Good night.